Hi everyone. In this video, I want to work through the classwork problems for section P.2. Section P.2. Uh, so you see here on the left, I have the exponent rules in blue. Uh, we're not going to be using all of them for each problem, but I want to have them here so we uh, can easily reference them. Now, for these problems, I want you to keep in mind that the the important the, the important aspect here, the focus should be on the understanding the exponent rules, not looking at any one problem and remembering how to solve that one problem, because we could get through this problem at least three different ways that I could think of, maybe more. All right, so it's the, it's the rules over here on the left that are important. So if we look at this problem, three to the negative three power times three. Well, Let's look at this negative sign first. Let's focus on the negative sign and this first exponent rule, the rule for negative exponents. This is the rule for reciprocals. So the way we deal with the negative exponent or what a negative exponent means, it means reciprocal. So if you have x to the negative a, in this case, it's three would be the x to the power of negative three. So there's the x to the negative a. Uh, we could rewrite that without a negative exponent as one over three to the positive three. And right? so that's what that first rule is telling us. Now three to the third power, that's three times three times three. So three times three is nine times three is 27. So that's 27, one over 27. So that's just, just this first part. And then there's, we're multiplying that by a three. So I'm going to add a, a uh, fifth rule here, and this one's a little bit more basic. Anything raised to the power of one is equal to itself. All right, so when we see three to the negative three times three, well, that's three to the negative three power times three to the first power. Okay. We just saw above three to the negative three, that's one over 27. And that's being multiplied by three to the first. And we can write three to the first as three over one. So now we can multiply across top times top, one times three is three. Bottom times bottom, 27 times one is 27. Now I have to reduce this fraction. So three is equal to three times one and 27 is equal to three times nine. They, they both have three as a factor. So three over three equals one. So they cancel, right? And we're left with one over nine, All right? So that'll be the, the final answer. Let's circle this in green. I mentioned there's there's, usually more than one way to solve a problem. So let's just do it again quickly. Uh, I'll do it in a different color. So let's start over three to the negative three power times three. Well, I'm gonna use that fifth rule that I wrote there. That's three to the negative three power times three to the first power. So now I'm gonna look at rule number two. When we multiply the same base, in this case, it's three to a power times three to a power. We can add the exponents. X to the A times X to the B equals X to the A plus B. So that's three to the negative three plus one. All right, we could combine the bases and add the exponents. So for the exponent, negative three plus one is negative two. And then applying that first rule again, we could rewrite that to get rid of the negative exponent, that's one over three to the second power. And three to the second power, three times three is nine. So that again, gives us one over nine. And I'm not gonna do it a third way, but there are multiple ways of solving these problems. And it comes down to understanding how to apply these rules for exponents. All right, similar problem, let's look at number two. All right, we've got x to the 14th divided by x to the negative 7th. And that looks like this one that I just highlighted. Same base. 
x to the a divided by x to the b. So in this case, the a is the 14. The a is the 14 and the b is the negative seven. So we could say x to the 14th power divided by x to the negative seventh power is equal to, well, when we have a fraction at the same base, we subtract exponents. All right, so that's x to the 14th power minus a minus seven. Make sure you're subtracting. And in this case, we're subtracting a negative which becomes addition. So that gives us X to the power of 21. Right, and that should do it for this one. And let's do it a different way. Um, instead of using rule number three, let's use rule number one and rule number two. So X to the 14th power divided by x to the negative seventh power. Well, we have a, um, a negative exponent on the bottom. So I'm looking over, oops, wanted to use a highlighter there. Right, when we have a negative exponent on the bottom, we could bring it up top and it becomes positive. So that's x to the 14th times x to the positive seven. Now, again, look, we're multiplying the same base. We add the exponents. So that's x to the 14th power plus seventh power. So that again gives us x to the 21st power. All right, a couple of different ways to approach the problem, but we're using this list of exponent rules. Okay, number three, a little bit more complicated. So let's start with the number over number, the 24 and the 32. So on top, we've got 24 times x to the third times y to the fifth. And on the bottom, 32 times x to the seventh times y to the negative nine. So let's start with the 24 over 32. Okay, so 24 and 32 have something in common. 24 is eight times three, 32 is eight times four, right? We have this common eight on the top and bottom. Eight over eight is one, so they cancel. And we're left with three over four. All right, then we can look at the X's. Or let's look at the variables. Let's look at both variables. So now we've got X to the third power times y to the fifth power. And on the bottom, we have x to the seventh power and we have y, oops, that should be positive seven, x to the seventh power and y to the negative nine power. All right, so if we're, we just look at the x's, x to the third on top, x to the seventh on the bottom, we have fraction. So we can subtract, that's three minus seven. We can subtract the exponents. And the same thing for the y's. We have five on top, a negative nine on the bottom. So we could subtract those five minus a minus nine. So let's put this together. X to the power three minus seven, that's X to the power of negative four. And then we've got a y to the power of five minus a minus nine. So that's five plus nine, which is 14. So now I could apply again, rule number one, we have a negative exponent, move that to the other side of the fraction. So that, it, that goes to the bottom becomes positive. So now we have y 
to the 14th power on top and x to the fourth power on the bottom. We want our final answer to contain only positive exponents. Doesn't matter if they're a fraction, it just matters that all the exponents are positive. All right, so we've got the three fourths. That was the numbers of 24 over 32. We've got the x to the 14th, or sorry, y to the 14th over x to the fourth. So our final answer, we've got a three on top. So three y to the 14th power divided by four x to the fourth power. All right, don't look at this and think this is the way you have to solve the problem. This is one of you know two or three or four different ways we could apply the exponent rules. The overall goal is to cancel all like terms, get rid of any negative exponents, and any variables that occur, in this case, there's x's and y's, our final answer could only have a, a, a one copy of x to a power and one copy of y to a power. Okay, so that does it for number three. The next couple of problems deal with a different type of problem, a different, a different topic, scientific notation. So scientific notation is a way to abbreviate. So we generally use scientific notation for numbers that contain a whole lot of zeros. Whether it's a really big number that ends in a bunch of zeros or a really small number, zero point something, you know, zero point zero 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 something, something, something. Okay, so a lot of zeros. So this is called scientific notation. Scientific notation. This problem is already in scientific notation, the, the times 10 to the eighth power. Now, it's easy to multiply a number by 10 because our number system is a base 10 number system. Every place value is another power of 10. So multiplying a number by 10, so let's say 6.22, if we just multiply by 10, not 10 to the eighth, but just by 10, that in essence moves the decimal point one place, right? So the times 10 will move that decimal point one place value over, or the number will get bigger by one place value. So 6.22 times 10 would be 62.2, right? So we're not multiplying by 10, we're multiplying by 10 to the eighth power. So six point, so let's put this in parentheses, uh, 6.22 times 10 to the eighth. So what that is saying is we're taking the number 6.22 times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, eight times, times eight, 10, eight times. So what that is going to do again is move the decimal point instead of just once, it's gonna move the decimal point eight places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we have to fill in those empty places with zeros. And there's our answer. Six, two, two, one, two, three, four, five. We got six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Throw in some commas to identify the number. So that looks like 622 million. 622 million. So multiplying by 10 means move the decimal point to the right one place. So if you're multiplying by multiple tens, you're moving the decimal point multiple places to the right. If that exponent on the 10 was a negative eight, negative exponent means reciprocal, means you're dividing, you're multiplying by one over 10 or dividing by 10. So keep that in mind. So the last one, number five, write the following number in scientific notation. So this is the reverse of the one we just did. So we've got 0 
zero, 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 zero. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros, a two, and a seven. So when you're putting a number in scientific notation, you want to move the decimal point so that the largest place value is the ones place. So you want to keep a whole number in the ones place. So this would be equal to 2.7, not 2.7, because the original number is not two, it's 0 0.000002. So to get the original problem, we move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So we have to reverse that. So times 10 to the negative seven. So if we take the number 2.7 and multiply it by 10 to the negative seven, that means we're actually multiplying by one over 10 to the seventh or dividing by 10 seven times. All right, so that does it for these five problems, classwork P.2.